I called it and her dad answers. I instantly panicked. I mean, I couldn't back out now. What am I gonna say, my friend sent that? They went on my Facebook when I walked out of the room and they sent Jane a message asking if I've left you guys hanging for long enough, but I was sick, so forgive me. But anyways, we left off with me being tripped by Deshaun, the bozo. All because he wanted to tell everyone that I got beaten basketball by a girl. Yeah, 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 I know, it's hilarious. Strike one. I'm gonna be honest, at this point, I had no idea what happened. All I know is that I'm on the ground and I hear laughter around me. Then Deshaun helped me up and took me to the clinic. I get there and I instantly go to the bathroom, and your boy was leaking. Blood all over my mouth, my hands, and I don't even know what to feel at this moment. But there's one thing I knew for sure. I'm using this to stay out of class. So I'm selling this injury, and the nurse, she bought it. So she called my teacher to have someone bring my assignments I was gonna miss for the day before she sent me home. See, I don't even know why she did that. I wasn't gonna do it anyways. Okay, I'm joking. Kids, please do your homework, or you're gonna end up like this. Mm -hmm. If you're under 18 and you know this guy, please contact the FBI. Y'all killing me with this So then Jane walks into the clinic with my backpack, the assignments, and something extra too. She gave me her finished assignment so I could just copy it. Still didn't do it. Look, listen, but not because I hate homework, because I hate cheating. That's big cat. So I end up going home and I'm playing my GameCube. I don't remember what game I was playing, but I know I had better graphics than NBA Live. But then I heard the doorbell ring, but I was supposed to be hurt, so I just let my mom get it. Next thing I know, my friend Josh is walking into my room, and Buddy is hype. He reaches into his pocket and he pulls out this, a flip phone. Now I know what you guys are thinking. This video is something serious. Let me go ahead and like it and subscribe. Yeah, you, you probably should do that. But you're probably also thinking, a flip phone? This guy has to be like 40 years old. No, no, no. At this time, the iPhone 4S had just came out. But this is what my boy got. Now, Josh, he's the bad influence of the group. He was always trying to do some crazy junk. And maybe that's just because he's... Windy. Like, you know, Windy City? Like Chicago? Man, what y'all thought I was gonna say? Josh was always trying to do something extra, but this time he had my attention. He showed me the phone book. Now I always saw this around the house, but I had no idea what it did. I just saw a huge book and I was like, nah, not reading that. If any teachers are watching this, you probably hate me right now, but just wait until I get into my other stories when I actually became more mature. Trust me, it gets better. Anyways, Josh starts looking through the phone book and trying to find people in our class. And he starts calling them, telling them the corniest jokes ever. And I mean, he's not even saying them right. Like, Buddy's talking about some, is your refrigerator fixed? Well, you better go stop it. I mean, what does that even mean? And I'm here laughing because they're not even getting mad. They're just confused at what my man's just said. So after he does that like five times, he leaves. And then I'm like, you know what? My turn. So I go get my house phone and I look for Jane's name in the phone book. And I couldn't find it. But then I realized the only way for you to find someone in the class was for you to know their parents' name. But there was only one person in the book that had that last name. So it had to be her. I called it and her dad answers. I instantly panicked. I didn't even think about what I was gonna say before I called, so I just hung up. And then I'm like, yeah, you know what? That's enough for this book for today. Then the phone starts ringing. I answer it, not thinking anything of it, and it's her dad again. This time, Buddy is barking. At this point, I'm scared, so I hang up the phone again. And my man's calls again. At this point, my guy clearly wants all the smoke. And I'm not built like that. But if I don't answer now, he'll just keep calling until my mom answers the phone. And if she finds out I was prank calling people. So I answer the phone and he's on fire. I don't even remember what he was saying, but he was definitely using a lot of uh, sentence enhancers. But I just let him finish. And then I was like, can I talk to Jane? Oh, why didn't you just say that? <laughs> I thought you were trying to prank call me. Which I was, but... I ain't want no smoke. Jane comes to the phone and once again, I didn't plan this beforehand, so I'm like, hey, do you have the homework? Didn't I give it to you in the clinic? Uh, yeah, never mind. You know what? Thanks. And she's like, wait, do you have a Facebook? No. Well, make one and add me. Okay. If only I would have known this would have been one of the biggest mistakes middle school me could have ever made. Now, fast forward a couple weeks and we're in class. Our eighth grade trip gets announced and everybody's excited, talking about all the roller coasters they're going to go on. And I kept it 100 from the jump. I'm afraid of roller coasters and I'm not going on any. But I'll still go though. Of course, all of my friends didn't want to hear none of that. But this time I wasn't budging. We ended up going back to my house and we're all in the room just chilling. Then I leave the room to go get something to drink. 
Now, when I'm walking back to the room, they start leaving. And I mean in the most shady way possible. But I'm like, man, whatever. I'm just going to go play Def Jam by myself anyways. I was tired of passing around the controller. But then I hear my Facebook messages go off. So I take a look. Go crazy. They got me. Go they got me. They got me. The boys got me. Go stupid. Ah, go crazy. Yeah. Go stupid. <laughs> They went on my Facebook when I walked out of the room and they sent Jane a message asking if she wanted to go on a roller coaster with me. And she said yes, but not just one, all of them. I mean, I couldn't back out now. What am I going to say? My friend said that? That's almost as bad as saying the dog ate my homework. The next day of school, she starts telling me about all the rides she wants to go on. And the first thing she said, Shikra. For those of you that had never been to Bush Gardens in Florida, let me tell you the description of the Shikra. <coughs> <clears throat> the ride was planned to be 160 feet high, but the park's executives rejected this and the height was changed to 200 feet. Now please tell me why somebody would do this. You're, you're a monster. Shika reaches a maximum speed of 60 miles per hour. I don't even go that fast in my car. And a total track length of 3,188 feet. It was converted to a floorless roller coaster in June 16, 2007. Now, obviously, you guys are wondering, when did I go to the park? 2011. So, yeah, it was Florida's at this point. Mind you, at this time, this ride was the most popular ride in all of Florida. People were legit lining up to die. So, I was like, the line for this ride is going to be super long, so we should go on something else. She agreed, and she was like, we'll just do our own thing and meet back up at 5, an hour before we have to leave the park. At that point, the line shouldn't be that long anymore. I'm definitely not showing up at 5. As a matter of fact... I might as well just fake another injury right now and end up not going to the park at all. 200 feet up in the air? <laughs> yeah, you thought. More like two feet on the ground? I'm not getting on that right a lick. You better tell her no. As a matter of fact, tell her she'll be hearing from your lawyer. Yeah, sure, good idea. I mean, I couldn't say no, but I was 1000% gonna try to finesse my way out of it later. Fast forward to the morning of the trip. I tried to fake sick, but my mom, she paid $250, so... Yeah, that was big dead. But on the bright side, she filled my backpack with snacks and drinks for the whole day and some. I mean, I had everything. Chips, cookies, Gatorade, fruit snacks, and most importantly, water. My mom drove me to the charter buses, and I was on the same bus as my boys. Great start to the day. But randomly, one of the kids on the bus starts chirping. I mean, he's talking about how he's going to ride every single ride in the park, how all the rides are baby rides, and how he's been on them hundreds of times before. Mind you. No one asked him any of this. He just started cashing all these big man checks for no reason. But I started feeling a little bit more confident. I mean, why would someone be cashing these checks for no reason? These rides had to be a breeze. So at this point, my nerves are super calm. I'm chilling. I mean, I actually even fell asleep on the bus. So in my book, we got to the park pretty fast. The lobby of the park was pretty stuffed. I mean, there was a lot of people here. But the first ride we saw was called the Montu. I see this ride and I'm like, mm. Yeah, nah, man, y'all got this one. I'm gonna just sit right here. I'm gonna get my mind right. I'll get y'all on the next one. They go ahead, and all of a sudden, I hear, oh, oh, I'm like, man, somebody better go get that little brother off that ride before Buddy dies. But obviously, I wanted to see what was going on. So I started walking towards the ride, and I realized, Come on, I know you all have thought about it. I mean, we all have to have FBI agents on our phone. Like, have you ever been talking to your friend about something and go on Facebook and see that same thing in an ad? I mean, it can't be a coincidence, right? I mean, we could assume it's just some AI that listens to 